Hey, thanks for tuning in again to Tim's Vinyl Confessions, and this episode is going to be another look at some cassette tapes. Um, when I first started looking for my cassette tapes, I wondered if there was anybody out there that would be interested in watching these, and I've come to find out that there are a few people that are interested. Um, I want to send a particular, I want to send a shout out to Todd Last from Todd's VHS for Life. Todd is a huge cassette fan, puts my collection to shame, absolutely, and he posts some good videos, so check that out. Todd's VHS for Life, I would say check his videos out. Uh, you can find him on Facebook and YouTube. And I also have to send a very special shout out to Brent Underhill and Brent's Cassette Cascade. Now, as of the time I've written this, I've only seen one video, but boy, is it a good one. Um, it's uh, very much... I take it as a highly complimentary tribute to uh, what I do here at TVC and the way that I show things off. So, well done, and I'll be honest with you, Brent's one of the few people that I would be afraid to sit down and play Trivial Pursuit Classic Rock Edition because I might not win, and I'm not bragging. I'm just stating a fact that this, having all this musical information in here, sometimes you come across someone that's got almost as much, if not more. So, anyway, so you may have guessed I'm going to do another cassette episode. This is... Um, a band that uh, I've talked about at length on here, being a longtime fan, band that kind of introduced me to hard rock music, even though they've gone off way, way, way off the path to the point where I could not get into their last album at all and uh, just didn't like it. But what they did in the past is so important to me, and especially cassettes, because it just kind of takes me back to starting off on this whole journey of this uh, music collection, which kind of is my only real hobby. I'm talking, of course, about Bon Jovi, so today I'm going to go over the Bon Jovi cassettes that I have in my collection. We'll start off at the start, of course. The first Bon Jovi album, 1984. I love this album. Uh, always thought it was a bit overlooked. There's a lot more to offer on this than just Runaway, but that's an awesome song, too. This is a Canadian edition. It's not like the one I originally had. This is a relatively newer issue, although it looks similar. This is actually a Canadian Columbia House edition from sometime in the 90s. Um, so you can kind of tell that. There weren't a lot of clear cassettes in Canada in the 80s. As a matter of fact, I don't think there were any. So here's the inner sleeve of the first Bon Jovi. Again, as I talked about on their vinyl collection, that's an old logo that I, I kind of wish they'd used. I liked it. I liked it a lot. So. And you read inside here, that's where you learn that Runaway, the song Runaway actually wasn't a band song uh, at all. None of the band members besides John Bon Jovi are on it. If you're an Aldo Nova fan, and I think I'm going to do a, an episode on him because he doesn't get enough attention. Aldo Nova appears on this album. He plays uh, keyboards and does some backing vocals. And one more shout out to Brent's cassette, Cascade. He pointed this out to me. I've been doing this all wrong all these years, and I'm su surprised I missed it. Polygram cassettes that came out in Canada, so anything with Bon Jovi, or Cinderella, or Kiss, or Def Leppard, or um, I don't know, Dire Straits, Polygram, which is now universal. Their cassettes in Canada had one thing in common. They had this QC10. Quality has a name. Brent did the right thing and signed his name to it. Sadly, I will not. I'm funny that way. Quality has a name. Um, the actual first Bon Jovi album I got after I got into the group was this one, the second one, 1700 Degrees Fahrenheit, and this is the actual album that I owned. I just put a new case on it. So this is one of the oldest cassettes in my collection. This is the very, very first Bon Jovi album I went and bought in a store. It was very exciting, because I'd heard Slippery Wood Wet. And I wanted to hear some more, so this is what I picked up. So you can tell by looking at the tape, obviously it's an older ed edition. And sadly, even though this is a QC10 tape, as you can see here, quality does not have a name on here. Wall, wall, wall. What's unique about this one too? Sometimes you'll see this, but not often. You can see that close. The song titles have the writing credits after them which is not something that you see all the time. It's not an important thing, but then that's why you're here watching, for the unimportant things. Okay, so obviously this is the, the album that did everything, that changed everything for, 
for Bon Jovi and got me into the music and all of that. Slippery When Wet. This is not the original cassette that I own. My original one was a Canadian one. You couldn't tell at this point, but you can tell right away here. This is an American edition. The Canadian one would have been red with black lettering and probably QC10. His quality still has a name in Canada. Anyway, um, so this is a newer uh, American edition of Slippery. Is this what the cassette looks like? Classic band photo. Absolutely classic. Now, one thing that this has that the Canadian one does not is lyrics to all the songs. So that was one thing that was different. But one something that, that the Canadian version had that was kind of beneficial to me, it actually had uh, a sleeve inside of it that said also available, and it had the first two albums. So that's what triggered me to say, well, I got to hear those too. I got to have them. Next up, still my favorite Bon Jovi album, New Jersey. This isn't the first version of New Jersey I had, but it looks just like it. This is the first album that I made it a point to make sure I was at a record store as soon as possible after it first came out. And it was the one, one of the first times I was really anticipating a new album by a band. And uh, it paid off, because it's still my favorite could not get it fast enough. So this is a US edition. Obviously all these are on Mercury Polygram Records. And uh, the usual stuff that was all that's always been in every edition of these. New Jersey album. I like how the song titles are handwritten. The next Bon Jovi band album came out in 92. A lot of things had changed. Keep the Faith. I actually like this album quite a lot. A lot of people kind of lost the kind of just a uh, bandage ship there, but I did like this album. This is the album I saw them twice on this tour, the first two concerts I ever saw. I talked about that in my tour book section. This is a Canadian Columbia House edition of Keep the Faith. Tape's a little faded. And inside of here, so same as in the CD. Lyrics. A couple of pictures. And the, oh no, not the last one. Uh, next up is Crossroad. This is the best of Bon Jovi, the first best of album for them that came out. Uh, came out in '94. Uh, that's what the Polygram cassettes looked like at the time. This is a Canadian Columbia edition, and I can see by looking at this that um, this needs rewinding. So chances are, this is the thing about cassettes: if you didn't rewind them, where this area of the song, whatever song it is on either side, I bet you there's a bit of sound loss. So you're about to hear a sound that I bet you some have never heard before. Hold on a second. Bear with me. I'm rewinding this tape as we dis as we go here. This has the same stuff that's uh, in the CD, except it doesn't have the little uh, paper that would always fall out when I'd open the CD that listed all of their other songs. And I got to say that one thing I did like about that is it actually had that uh, not only did they have John Bon Jovi's Blaze of Glory, Young Guns 2 soundtrack, but Richie's sadly overlooked album, first solo album, Stranger in This Town. I've got one more thing to show you from my Bon Jovi cassettes, and I only bought this because Columbia House was having a sale on their tapes. I don't like this album these days. This came out in 1995. This is where they were really starting to get way, way, way too mellow for my tastes. Um, there are a couple songs on here that are okay, but I was just used to more. Obviously, the quality of the music wasn't in question. It was just the direction for me, and obviously, uh, they maintained their success like unlike any band of that era, so... What do I know? Um, now I will say, um, I'll just show you, that this is the same stuff that's in the CDs. Now this was their last album for five years, and it wasn't until 2000 that they came up with Crush and kind of had a mini comeback, because that had It's My Life on it, which is a fantastic song. Um, and I have, I remember seeing that in stores at the time, and I should have bought it, because uh, 
It would have been the only tape I had from the year 2000. So that's my Bon Jovi collection. So the um, Todd's VHS for Life, Brent's Cassette Cascade, I'm sure there's others out there. And uh, check them out. We're, we're all doing, we're all showing off the music we love. And so when I call this Tim's Vinyl Confessions, I'm just showing off the music that I love, whether whatever form it's in. But uh, I did start out with cassettes, so I do have a soft spot towards the tapes for sure. Thanks for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions.